after, after the service, Diana said to me, Reverend Perry, I'm one of those. I've got a whole family. Amen. And she said, I have multiple personalities. This is the most honest woman I'd ever met in my life. And she said, you know, sometimes that little anger still comes out. She said, I get in my wheelchair. She said, I paint half of my face with lipstick, put on a wig on this side. And she says, leave a little uh, stubble on this side and go down to, she said, the mall. Amen. She said, where I can really testify to people, uh, those that have the guts to come up and talk to me. So you see... Even when they give you powerlessness, God can still give you power. Amen. And that's what I want you to remember this morning. Second thing I want you to remember, another story. This last week I went to the funeral of Bishop Melvin Wheatley. Bishop Wheatley was a Methodist bishop, and uh, it was amazing. I went over to uh, Wilshire Boulevard United Methodist Church near USC. There were a thousand people at the worship service, and it was thrilling to be there. After the service, I got to talk to his wife, uh, who is 96 years old, head as clear as a bell, their son Paul. And I thought of Melvin. And, and I heard this story as I sat there about more about Melvin than I knew. Melvin Wheatley, young Methodist minister, married his uh, sweetheart, and they were together for 60 eight years before he died this last week. 68 years together, Melvin and Lucille. And oh, they decided they were going to live out the gospel. Wherever God sent them, they were going to live out the gospel. And they said what transpired and happened was they ended up, of course, uh, in the Central Valley over in Stockton. World War II hit. And some pastor, that's right, you're from Stockton. Amen. Our associate pastor, the assistant pastor of the church. And it was amazing to me. He said, uh, as I heard this story that something happened all at once they had Japanese American members of their church and all at once the US government, World War II broke out and they started moving Japanese Americans, putting them in internment camps something that had never happened before to citizens of the United States and as they moved them they said we can't save everybody but we're going to help one family and they went to this Japanese American family and said we will move into your house, we will make payments for you. We will keep it for you. This war has to end and you're going to be able to come back home and have your property. And you know something? That's exactly what transpired and happened. And as a result of it, that family that they saved their property for them, their son uh, became uh, a Methodist bishop, Bishop Santos. Uh, you know, it's an amazing first Californian from Japanese American descent to become a bishop in the Methodist church because of what Reverend uh, uh, Dr. Wheat did. I want to tell you this too. The other thing that he did that we were so glad of him that he honored, he was honored for our Human Rights Award in MCC, he and his wife, was that in 1978 the United Methodist Church as MCC started, as we started pushing out, as all at once people started talking about our issues, the United Methodist Church passed a resolution and they said that it is in, you know, that you couldn't be a uh, gay and you couldn't be a Christian. And Bishop Wheatley, Melvin Wheatley, immediately at that time said, I refuse. I refuse, he said, for 160 years, all the Methodist bishops had to sign what was passed by the general council of their denomination. And he said, I'm so sorry, I can't do it. I want to tell the rest of you bishops why I can't. He said, number one, he said, I don't believe it. Number two, he said, I've got to tell you, he said, I do, I know people who are gay and Christian. Number three, and he named four people. The last one was his son, and his son, John. And he said, I want to tell you, my son is a gay man. I, am, I cannot in conscience sign this thing. And it was the first time in 160 years, not all the bishops signed it. They had never had it to happen before. After that, they never asked bishops to sign anything again. That was the end of it right then and there. And his son died in 1985 of AIDS. And yet he and his wife helped P flag start. They moved to make sure that we had our rights. Amen. Oh my goodness. The last thing I want to tell you, even, you know, he had power. But in his powerlessness, when everything was going wrong and they even thought about throwing him out as a bishop, he still held his integrity together and God gave him his power back again. 
wonderful story I watched not long ago. Beautiful church. When Napoleon attacked Russia in the Napoleonic Wars and uh, when Russia beat back Napoleon and uh, they won the war, all of the people in Russia decided they wanted to build a church to thank God for delivering them. They were powerless. Oh, they still had the Serbs. Everything was wrong with that country. The army was awful. But in the middle of that, after it was over with, they wanted to thank God. And they said, we want to build a church. And they built this beautiful cathedral in Moscow, the Cathedral of Christ the King. Well, something happened in the 1930s after Joseph Stalin became the dictator of that country. Stalin one day said, I want to build, he said, the House of the Republics. He said, I want a new capital for Russia. This capital was going to be with the statue of Lenin on top, as tall as the Empire State Building in America. This was going to be the world's largest capital. He said, there's just one thing wrong. He said, the church is in the way. And my goodness, he immediately in the Constitution of Russia, they were the only country that declared themselves officially an atheist country, that religion was not going to have any part of it. And what transpired and happened? He took that gorgeous, beautiful Orthodox, that Russian Orthodox Church, had it tore out dug down to the foundations, had it tore out, lay the foundations for his new capital building, and then World War II started. It was later he started thinking about doing it again, but he died before he could build it. And of course, we all know what transpired and happened in Russia. Finally, there was the fall of the Berlin Wall, and then, of course, communism fell all across Eastern Europe, mostly. And it was amazing that in Russia something happened. As soon as they became, uh, you know, the Russian Republic, all at once they were no longer a communist nation. The citizens of that country, the first thing they said to their president, to their leadership, we want the Church of Christ the King rebuilt again. And they started taking up money from all over that country. They filled in the hole where the church had once been and where the capital was going to be. They redid it and they rebuilt the church the cathedral of Christ the King exactly as it was before it was torn down and it's there and not the Russian capital for communism that was supposed to be there see they were powerless for a long time but God gave them power amen see when we wake up and realize in our powerlessness sometimes God is waiting God wants to give us that power just remember that this wonderful day here at Palm Sunday God bless you saints amen